What's up, I'm Triple Shoot. Let's talk about optimizing Fragpunk for the best competitive edge and best performance. Just keep in mind, this guide's not gonna cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, you'll find related guides linked down below for even better performance out of your system. Let's just focus on the in-game options. First of all, obviously make sure your Windows is up to date as well as your graphics card driver. When you update your GPU driver, you will need to compile shaders again. So just wait for this to finish first. Starting off at the very top before we do any optimization, you can either check the differences in a play followed by training at the very top and training base or practice versus AI or in the settings in the bottom right followed by video scrolling down here at the very end you'll find a benchmark tool if this is the first time you're playing quickly get a baseline of what your FPS is before you change anything that being said in the bottom right we can also import and export settings you will find my code down below but don't just blindly paste it in there are a few important changes that I've made that you might not want to make or that you may want to customize so watch this video through first First of all, let's get a baseline of performance. I'll use the benchmark tool and let's see what's happening here. So out of the box with the default settings, for my PC at least, I'm sitting at around a solid 230 FPS, which is pretty good for a 3080 Ti at 2K. Some people have been complaining about performance being super low, at least on older systems, but this guide should hopefully fix that, as well as some input latency that some people have been getting too. So we'll quickly wait for this to run through. And as you can see, this is the performance that came out, 217 average frames with 267 max and a low of 131. Let's improve this. Starting off with general gameplay improvements for a competitive edge under the general tab, I'd recommend applying the anti-motion sickness defaults just to turn off a couple of annoying things like depth of field, camera shake, and things like that. This should give you general vision improvements while you're playing and running around. So camera shake during sprint is turned off. Then switch weapon on pickup. I would definitely recommend turning this off for a competitive edge. Switching weapons at the wrong time can mean a certain death. Flash eye guarding mode. I would recommend turning on for a gray flashbang instead of a white one. Then under minimap, you'll find keep player centered and minimap orientation, which you can have as off and fixed for a more traditional FPS experience, or if you'd like the map to rotate and move with you, keep player centered on and minimap orientation to rotate. I personally like the classic way. Then scrolling down performance metrics, I definitely recommend having this turned on for some performance info in the top left, ping and things like that. And down here, hide overlay visible skin components from enemies, I'd recommend turning this on just to ensure competitive fairness from enemy players. When you're looking at them, there's no pay to win skins that cause issues with you seeing them in the maps, in shadows, etc. Having this on should be a competitive edge. From allies, however, doesn't really matter, as you'll know where teammates are by their positioning, health bars, and things like that. Then on the keyboard tab, if you're someone who likes to bunny hop, next to jump slash vault, click here and scroll down. To bind, scroll down to bunny hop or jump in game. This will unbind your weapon switching, but I would highly recommend getting used to using your number keys to switch between your different weapons so that there's no fumbling of scrolling too far, especially when you need it. Getting this muscle memory should help a lot with competitive edge. Then skipping straight to the video tab, here we can get some actual performance from our game. For the display section, I'd recommend display mode being set to full screen for the best input latency and performance, but on recent versions of Windows 11, Borderless has about the same input latency and performance, so this is fine for most people. Display ratio and resolution should absolutely match your display, unless you're trying to get some kind of stretched resolution, in which case you can push it to other and customize it here a little bit further. There's not too many options, so much like Counter-Strike and things like that, you may want to use a custom resolution resolution inside of the NVIDIA control panel, AMD's equivalent or Intel's equivalent to get a more particular stretched resolution set. But for me, 16 by 9 is fine and display resolution should match a display or at least be compatible. And for me, 2K is perfect. Yours may be 1080p or 4K. FOV is entirely your preference. Personally, I like raising this quite a bit. This will technically affect your FPS, but it's all about preference. Then filter, I would recommend highlight, which is the second option, which makes things a bit brighter and a bit easier to see the difference between different colors, such as players and walls, etc. Post-processing intensity, normal is fine. Menu frame rate limit, 60 is good, but you can lower it if you wish. As well as the out of focus frame rate limit, you can lower this as well. If you tab out into something like Discord or YouTube and it's lagging, lower this, and that should help your FPS there quite dramatically. If you're streaming, I'd recommend leaving it set to unlimited or something a bit higher, just so that the game doesn't look too weird when you tab out. And of course, the gameplay frame rate limit should absolutely be unlimited pretty much
much in all cases. I've heard that capping this, for some people, actually improves input latency, but if you're not having any issues with that, just leave it as unlimited. If you're trying to stream or record and other programs are lagging, such as YouTube or Discord, you can try capping your FPS to slightly below what you're actually getting, but unfortunately, the highest that we can go here is your monitor's refresh rate, at least I'm pretty sure, 165 is mine, so that's the highest option I have here. That's fine, otherwise unlimited. Then brightness is your preference, but I would recommend somewhere around 1.3 to 1.4, just for better visibility in game, as it is generally dark in a lot of places. Then vertical sync, definitely off, unless you're getting screen tearing, and if you are getting screen tearing, try I leave this set to off and turning on anti-tearing with DirectX 12 selected for graphics API. Basically, we have these set to off by default for better input latency on most systems. Only turn these on if you need it. That being said, anti-tearing is supposed to not add any input latency in DirectX 12, but just to be on the safe side, leave the set to off unless you notice any tearing. And graphics API should be DirectX 12 for better performance on most systems, but as you can see, there's a hardware requirement of Windows 10 or higher and 8 gigabytes of video memory or more. If you don't meet either of these, you might be stuck on DirectX 11 and that's fine too. Then scrolling down minimalist graphics, I would recommend turning on and this is sort of the performance slash competitive mode for your visual settings. Having the set to on does simplify the game a little bit, but it should make it a lot more visible to see players hiding in dark areas and things like that, as well as giving you way better performance. For the most part, push everything here to minimalist, so material, light and scene, as well as effects just so that there's less visual clutter and it's way easier to acquire targets and flick to them to click them. Dead effect also should be off for less visual clutter, especially when enemies are grouped up together. Damage numbers I would leave on just for a visual indication of what's happening, but that's your preference. UI simplification should be on as well as UI animation reduction just so that again, there's less visual clutter. With these very simple changes, you should immediately see a big improvement in performance and of course, a very big difference in visual competitive edge. It should be quite a bit easier to play and stay focused on the game. Scrolling down to graphic quality, there's two different presets, smooth and ultra. We're going to be customizing things so it doesn't matter where you start. First of all, upsampling and anti-scaling. You've got a couple of different options here. What I would recommend is either NVIDIA DLSS 4, which is the newer DLSS technology, which is fantastic. It should be better looking and faster than other DLSSs. So it's great news that it's included here by default. If you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, choose AMD FSR 3 instead for similar effects. For any of these upscalers, I'd recommend choosing at lowest the quality preset, especially if you're playing at lower resolutions like at 1080p, as anything lower than this may cause visual artifacts and weird things to happen in game. If you absolutely need more performance, push this to balance and play with that, but no lower. For me, I'll leave it on quality, but just keep in mind I can gain extra performance by setting this to balance instead. And model preset, if you're using DLSS 4, you can prioritize speed or quality, obviously choose speed. Then frame generation should be off in all cases for less input latency and no weird visual artifacts once more, then low latency mode should be turned on if you have it. For me, it says NVIDIA Reflex, so I'll choose that as on, and you'll see DLSS 4 Reflex set this to on as well if you have it. If you chose FSR 3 or a different option, this may be slightly different for you. Then right below this, we've got some more graphics options. Obviously, things are already simplified, so we should see a good performance boost off the bat, but we can lower things even further for way more performance. Mesh quality, I'd recommend leaving at high. You don't really need to drop this as the further things are from you, the lower quality they'll be. It seems to be handled pretty well here, so it's not too much of an issue. As for shadow quality, post-processing and effect quality, I'd recommend moving these all to low. As for texture quality, it really depends on how much VRAM your system has. For the most part, on most systems, high is good enough. This does change the quality of your minimap and things like that too, so I wouldn't go too low here unless you necessarily need to. That being said, higher quality textures usually don't come with any extra performance cost if you have more than enough VRAM. So if you have, say, 12 or so gigs of VRAM or more in your graphics card, you can raise this to epic and not need to worry about much at all. I'll leave this on high just to be safe. Then screen space reflection, I'd also recommend setting to off, even though this is probably the cheapest reflection effect. If you can bear having it off or don't notice it, definitely do set it off for a very small FPS boost, possibly competitive edge. Then weapon depth of field, weapon dynamic blur, and scene dynamic blur should all be turned off by that anti-motion sickness option from the general tab we activated earlier, but if they're not, I'd recommend choosing all of these as off. 
ray tracing obviously should be off in all cases unless you're trying to show off the game, in which case you can turn it on and push things up, but having this on in any way will cause you to tank FPS on any graphics card. It's just not a good idea for a competitive shooter. Then screen space, global illumination. This is off by default, just leave it off anyways. Finally, UI resolution and animation physical shouldn't have too much of an effect on your system. Leave them on high and on, it should be okay. And with that, we've optimized pretty much everything. Hit A to apply your settings and we'll start the benchmark once more just to see how things have changed. So here we go, let's see. Just keep in mind, after changing settings, a restart may be required just to make sure everything's set and loaded properly. But as you can see, straight off the bat, things are way brighter, obviously, and it's much easier to see what's going on. Everything's been simplified, making spotting players a lot easier. Not to mention, look at those FPS numbers. And there we go, FPS has jumped to 272, maximum 314, that's great. And best of all, minimum frame rate is way above 200, meaning there's not gonna be so many stutters and weird things like that happen happening in-game, which is fantastic for consistency and good performance. Your numbers are obviously going to be different to what I have here, but probably the most important one is CPU load and GPU load. While this game should definitely not be CPU intensive at all, these two numbers being separated are great. If you find that you're super heavily CPU loaded, you can happily raise some of your graphics settings without too much of an effect on performance at all really. If you're entirely GPU loaded and you've loaded all of your settings, that's great. It means that we've optimized pretty much as far as we can without any say config file tweaks and things like that but that's pretty much it the only last thing that i would recommend is on the audio tab at the very top the character voice i'd lower pretty much all the way i hate when characters speak and yap in game but most importantly the announcer voice as well as that may be slightly distracting and maybe music too also i'd recommend character voice simplification being turned on so that only important voice lines are played simplifying what you're hearing too allowing you more mental capacity to focus on the game. Finally, of course, voice chat, input team, and party push to talk is the preferred option here. Open mic is just going to be pretty annoying. And that's it. We've optimized this game pretty much as much as we can, at least with the in-game graphics options. The only thing I haven't covered is the custom crosser at the very bottom here, which you can enable by changing this from use default to apply to hipfire or apply to hipfire and site crosser. And you can customize it down here. Usually I'd just leave this as dot Somewhere around six for thickness is pretty good. Center gap zero, that's like a circle around it. Outline is fine and color, something super visible, maybe a really by green or magenta color should work pretty well. Anyways, of course, that's up for you to figure out to your preference. So with everything done, in the description down below, you'll find my crosshair if you wish to steal it. And of course, my video settings, audio settings, and that should be fine. You'll find this down below. Not to mention probably just my video settings alone if you wish to copy just that. Anyways, so that's really it for this quick guide. Hopefully you found it useful. Thank you for watching. My name is Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.